Okay. So, having a little discussion with my friend Florida Line. Flor Florida Line. Point number one. That first video was not a fail. It was a success. It was a triumph. It was a brilliant, concise, easily understandable, theological triumph. Okay. The atonement. Uh, I will try to do this as simply as possible. The atonement. Jesus Christ is a hundred percent man. As a man, he is he is going to be a representative of all humanity. Now, I've heard Richard Dawkins talk about, you know, the Old Testament God is one of the most unpleasant characters in all of literature. And actually, that's not a bad Richard Dawkins. You may think it is, but it is not. So, I have heard Richard Dawkins say that. Not understanding the theology of the Old Testament or the Bible in general. Atheists love to point out Old Testament God really means spirited. They misunderstand what is going on. In the Old Testament, we have a righteous God meets sinful man. This is the theology behind it. It does not go well. Why does it not go well? Well, half the time, God is dealing out smitings on sinful man. They cannot interact because we have holy God and sinful man, and they do not get along. And most of the reason they do not get along is that God, in his righteousness, must punish iniquity whenever, wherever and whenever he finds it. People misunderstand eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. They misunderstand what that means. They say, oh, that means evil blood God of Judea, whatever. No, it means there is no such thing as moral transgression without moral consequence. That's what it means. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Every moral transgression that is committed in this world requires consequence, punishment, if you will. So, God has a problem. He's got to deal out smitings because people are sinful. So he's got to deal out some, some, some hard times on the people. Well, why is that a problem? Because in his mercy and his love for humanity, he doesn't really want to. He wants to let us off the hook. So he finds a solution. I, God, am really, really mad at the sin that people commit. But I, God, am also very loving and merciful. So I am perfectly righteous. I must punish sin wherever I find it. But I'm also perfectly loving and forgiving. So what's my solution? I got it. I will send my son as a representative for all of humanity who is also 100% man and mysteriously me. That's the part where you're getting confused. It is, it is me, God. I, the Father, am sending me, my son, who is 100% man, to stand in for everybody else. Jesus says, if it, if it is possible, take this cup from me. What cup? The cup of God's wrath poured out on sinful man. Jesus goes on the cross so God can pour out his wrath on him, Jesus Christ. So he can let me, Craig, and you, hopefully, go free. See, I do things that are sinful. Maybe even this morning. You know, I did this, that, and the other thing. Maybe not, but maybe I did. God doesn't want to smite me. Because he realizes that I'm weak and I'm incapable of righteous action. Because I am a human. I am not perfect. I'm close, but I'm not there. So he devises a solution and pours out all of his righteous indignation on Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in the flesh, but also 100% man. So you're, you're pretending like there isn't mystery in this. There is.